Welcome back. Every year, a festival celebrating refugees and their place in society is held in Scotland. This year's event has seen asylum seekers living across the country take part in a project to remember those who fled Belgium during the First World War. Now, they've produced a film and an exhibition based on their work. Amy Dunsmuir has been along to see what they've found. It's been happening for centuries. Thousands of people forced to flee their homes, seeking a safe haven from war and persecution. Today, they're coming from the Middle East, but in 1914, hundreds of thousands of Belgians came to the shores of the UK as refugees. You want a safe place, but safe place costs you everything. This year, the Scottish Refugee Council has taken on a project asking asylum seekers from across the country to find out more about those who came to Scotland during the First World War. Now they've produced a film comparing their own stories to those from 100 years ago. So almost no one knew about the Belgian refugees. It's one of those things that uh, it doesn't come up so often. And uh, that story being told uh, gives us a way to kind of tell our story and the refugees today because uh, the, the view on refugees has changed quite a bit since then. And it definitely is a story that needs to be told. The film is accompanied by an exhibition at Glasgow's Mitchell Library where anyone can look back at the timeline of Scotland's refugees. People will flee war, flee uh, persecution, um, no matter where you're born and no matter who you are. Um, and again, the reflection on welcoming countries like Scotland, um, I think is very powerful and hopefully people will see that through the exhibition and the film as well. One of the stories to feature in the exhibition is that of Edith Dixon. She was a Belgian national living in Scotland as war broke out helping countless refugees make a new home in Scotland and winning a medal for her efforts. I did further research in our photo albums and discovered a photo of her as a nurse. And I'd always seen this photo and hadn't made the connection at all. She wasn't a nurse, but she nursed. She must have been like an auxiliary nurse. Um, as people came in, the Belgian refugees came off the trains. She knew it was happening in Belgium and was there to help. The exhibition is open until the 26th of June trying to encourage more of us to be like Edith and to be there to help. Amy Dunsmuir, STV News. Well, let's find out more. Joining me now is Kozro Zangana, who's a heritage researcher, and Susie McKeever, who's the Arts Director from the Scottish Refugee Council. Kozro, coming to you first of all, it looks like a lot of work has gone into this exhibition project. Why did you think that this was a story that needed to be told? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things is that this, the Belgian refugee stories from uh, back in World War I, it's one that hasn't been told and not many people know about it. And uh, from the people who were involved, uh, their uh, sons, their daughters, it needs to be told for them to actually know about it. But also is that the fact that it's still happening till today, refugees are coming and they probably will. And it needs to be told for them as well. And Susie, you know, how, how much work from the, the Scottish Refugee Council's point of view, how much work's gone into this project and, and what do you hope to, to get from this? Well, I think one of the things that, um, you know, arts work can do is really try to offer fresh perspe perspectives on uh, stories such as this. Um, so with this, um, we, we really wanted to go back and look at what happened, what were the experiences like of these 19,000 Belgian refugees who came to Scotland. And we've done that by working with a group of refugees, asylum seekers and local Scots. So through the project, they've been able to add their own story to that as well and hopefully offer it up in quite a fresh way for the audience as you come to the exhibition and film. Absolutely. And, and Cosro, how important is it that you know, people today remember what the Belgians went through in World War I and that we don't forget about it? One of the things is that to know that these were people, these were uh, engineers, these were people just like us, and that they went through this trauma and they had to flee and seek asylum. And one of the things is to humanise them and remember that people are going through that today. So it's important to remember that for the people who are going, uh, going through it today. Exactly, that's what I was just going to say. You know, well, everybody's seen you, the thousands, millions of people who've been affected by the, the refugee and migrant crisis across Europe today. You know, how do the stories compare? Is there any similarities between what people went through then and now? 
Well, back then, it, it might have been a bit easier for people to uh, get along as refugees because the perception, the public reception of refugees was much better than it is now. Uh, refugees are looked at through as, as much, of a, much more of a negative perspective today. So that's one of the diffi uh, difficulties that refugees face today. Uh, mm -hmm. other than the similarities that the story is pretty much similar. Exactly. Susie, I was just going to say to you there, is that what you know the Refugee Council has to do? It's all about trying to, to change people's attitudes as well, because some people do have this negative view of, of refugees. Absolutely. I mean, I think we, we are there to respond to, um, you know, those, those um, and challenge, uh, you know, negative perceptions, um, but also to encourage people to, to welcome refugees. And we do that by raising their voices and, and telling their stories, which is one of the things that we're trying to do through this project. So hopefully people can get to know some refugees who are living in Scotland today and find out more about why they're here. And that might that might make people feel a little bit more um, empathy with what they've been through and everything they've had to leave behind in order to be here. Exactly. How has Scotland you know, done when it comes to welcoming refugees? Are we quite a welcoming bunch? Are we good at it? I think Scots um, have, have really uh, responded um, pretty well to you know this crisis that we've seen that we are currently in. Um, we have taken in a number of um, Syrian refugees but also refugees from you know other countries that there are, is conflict in across the world and I think Scots are particularly compassionate but there's still a lot more that we could be doing um, and, and with the Refugee Festival we're trying to really spotlight and mm -hmm. celebrate some of those really amazing stories of uh, welcome that we've seen you know especially over the last year in the last few years um, but there's always more that can be done and you know there's people out there who um, who who really need to to find safety exactly. here so mm -hmm. and Koshal can you relate to, to any of this you know from your story when you left Iran yourself mm -hmm. about was it around six years ago six or? years ago I first came to Britain to study as a student and then a few years ago uh, I had to seek asylum in the UK and then things kind of changed dramatically from then but it is a story of uh, so many people helping along the way and then finally settling down in Glasgow and, uh, and it's been a it's been a good story it's just that the fact uh, people not necessarily don't know anything about refugees and once you get to meet someone and hear their story it changes everything for you so i think that would help a lot if, of people if people knew yeah. more and they knew the facts and they you know they spoke to people mm -hmm. about it, it might mm -hmm. improve the, the situation what can ordinary people do you know what can people watching at home do to to help refugees whether it's those arriving here or or those obviously in europe at the moment mm -hmm. Well, I think, you know, in, in contrast, um, what, what we've seen with the, the Belgium story, things were a little bit different back then. People responded by offering up uh, rooms in their houses. Um, we saw lots of fundraising efforts being made. Fundraising is certainly something that people can do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people, people need support in all sorts of ways. Um, and, and I think that that's definitely, that's definitely one way. Um, so... Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And briefly, Koshro, yeah. what, what can people do from your perspective, you know, yeah. after your experience, what would make a difference? I think the biggest part is coming in to these festivals, to these organisations that are doing so much for refugees and meeting a few people and hearing their stories personally. It will help quite a bit to change your perspective personally on what refugees go through and what their needs as mm -hmm. in this community is. So, yeah. Exactly. Well, Koshro, Susie, thank you very much for joining me in the studio tonight. Thank, thank you. you. Now, a Scottish author has been awarded for his work promoting human rights in children's literature. Ross Collins has been given the first ever Amnesty Sillip honour for his book, There's a Bear in My Chair. He fought off stiff competition from seven other nominees from across the globe. His book tells children that nobody should take their things from them without a good reason. Well, to get to the shortlist was amazing, but to win the Amnesty Sillip Award, it just means a huge amount. Because it's, sorry, I keep calling it an award. It's not an award, it's an honour. And it is an honour. Um, because for the book to be recognised by uh, an organisation of this, the quality of Amnesty is just huge. Now, remember, you can get in touch with us if there's a story you think we should know about or an issue you want us to highlight. You can contact our reporters by Facebook or Twitter and keep up to date on the STV News app. And that's it for the moment. From all of us here in the STV News team, do enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.